Welcome to Heels in the Courtroom, a podcast about successfully navigating law and life, featuring the women trial attorneys at the Simon Law Firm. Hello, everyone. Staying true to our mantra of self-care and reflection, we are taking a couple of weeks off from recording. This is Amy Gunn, and I am excited to bring you an encore presentation of one of our favorite episodes from a previous season. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. Today on Heels in the Courtroom, we are talking about how we refuel or recharge or retreat, or maybe the lack thereof, it's something we all struggle with. I will say for my own perspective on this, I don't have a lot of answers. I feel that most of my career and most of my life, anytime I get up to a point where I really need to take a break, it takes a legit physical sign for me to realize I'm stressed or, you know, have been burning the candle at both ends. So I usually find that the universe tells me that it's time to take a seat. So I'm not real good at this. So I'm I'm going to listen most of this podcast. I will tune in here and say what I what I do during stressful times to refuel or recharge. I like early mornings when I'm stressed out. I know everyone is probably rolling their eyes or like, what the hell is wrong with I'm you? With you, girl. I am an early morning person, and if I'm gonna be stressed out or working all day. The earlier I can start my day, the better. And I have sometimes started days at 4 a.m. because I will have all the time in the world, it feels like, to myself. Nobody's contacting me. Nobody's emailing me except for my dad, but that's fine. I can ignore those ones for a little bit. I just recently did that as I was uh, preparing to try this case that got bumped. I worked out for an hour and then the next day decided that hour I still kind of felt rushed with all the stuff that I had to do before work. So I got up a little bit earlier and I did a workout and then I did 30 minutes of yoga just in the morning by myself. And it just got me, you know, fueled up for the day. And I felt recharged every single day because I, you know, I felt good. I was getting enough sleep. I did get enough sleep that week. And that just got me centered and focused for the day because once 7 a.m. rolls around, it's done. You're going to be in communication with people all day until the time that you go to bed. So I find that the only truly quiet, peaceful times that I have that I really enjoy are just the early morning hours before the hustle and bustle of the day starts up. Um, As far as turning everything off for a significant period of time, I just don't do that. I can't do that yet. And I don't really mind it because if I give myself a couple hours in the morning by myself, then I'm fine to get through the day. And nothing gets in the way of what you want to do at 4 a.m. No, no, it's great. It really is great. And I know that it sounds crazy, but it it's crazy when you look at the clock at 10 a.m. and you realize how much stuff you've already gotten done and how good you feel about the day. I don't know. That's just been my experience. What about you, Amy? I'm an early riser by choice. And I don't know, a number of years ago when my metabolism slowed down because of my age, I started working out in the morning. And like you, Mary, if I don't do that first thing in the morning, life gets in the way I don't get done. So I get up every morning at 4.50, the alarm goes up, it goes off for like three seconds and I'm done because I like getting up. And I get on the treadmill and I don't look at my... Well, okay, I look at my phone before I get on the treadmill, but just to see if there's any like crazy emergency. And then I watch some crazy, stupid show while I'm on the treadmill. And my rule is I don't watch that show any place other than when I'm on the treadmill because I don't want that. That's my incentive. So and then I get up and I start my day with the kids and the cat and and the husband and the house and everything. Oh, and the job. (laughs) <laughs> um, oh yeah, that, that, that comes later, but I feel good. I feel really good. I, not only do I physically feel better, but I am proud of myself because I've gotten up and I've gotten that box checked off and I feel good about it. I also have always slept. I'm blessed. I'm a good sleeper. I can fall asleep. Now the problem, of course, if you get up at three fifty, like this morning and I'm like, oh, I'm only an hour away from what time I usually get up. 
But that's not healthy. It's just not healthy. So I force myself to go back to sleep, and it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I think that, to me, is how I get ahead of being burned out and need, needing to refuel because I feel like I do it on a daily basis. Now, if you're at work in a stressful situation, I just close my eyes. I just I close my eyes and I go to my happy spot, wherever that is, watching cat videos on the beach in Hawaii. I don't know. It's just one of those places. And you just take a few seconds and then you just trust yourself to get up and get it done. But I think that it's a constant struggle. And I can say that it's taken me a long time to feel like I deserve time for myself because the choices that I've made with family and with work and with other community and and professional obligations, I've always been the last on my list of priorities. And the last few years, I've decided that's not the best place to be because you have to take care of yourself. And if you can't take care of yourself, you're not doing a very good job taking care of the other things in your life. So you do have to prioritize yourself. And I think I've done a better job at that over the last few years. The other thing is, I think you have to have a hobby. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be fancy, but you have to have something that you enjoy other than your job and your family. I mean, you have to enjoy something else, whatever that is. And if you haven't found that or think you don't have that, then seek it. Find it, focus on it, even if it's just maybe once a month or whatever it is, but you have to have that. And then also I've always believed that you have to have something to look forward to. And for us, with my family, it's always, we always like to go somewhere. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be lengthy. It just, we have to have something on the calendar, a few days off that you respect, that you calendar, that you actually do. And even if it's six months from now, I think I can make it because I'm going to be there in six months with my family, with my friends, whatever it is. So I think you just have to plan. I mean, gosh, that's what we do on a daily basis. We plan everything. We plan, plan, plan. So just work yourself into your planning. You morning people. I know. I, I, just, I know. Just well, cannot. I mean, you, Liz, you emailed you. something Same. at 11.06 p.m. last night, and I'd been asleep for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so to to represent the the non-morning people. <laughs> the night owls. I'm, I'm here. Say, I'm here right, for you. All right. Night owls. And, and I'll say, I, I work I'm not primarily. not one of those either. <laughs> I work primarily with Amy, and so I see that she is up emailing at 6 a.m., and typically I, I have, I'm still fast asleep. And I think what's important for people who aren't morning people, and I've, I've read studies about this, mostly to make myself feel less <laughs> lazy about sleeping in, but there are some people the way, listen to me, that <laughs> we're hardwired, is that our, you know, creative juices don't really get flowing until it's it's later. And I actually find myself the best work I do is typically after 2 p.m. And I'll work and I did this in college. I'll work from Same. 2 p.m. all the way up until midnight. And that's when I think I do my best work. And unfortunately for me, I think for a lot of evening people is when you have a you work in a setting that's nine to five, you're expected to be there early. And I just don't function in the morning. I just don't. And luckily, I think Amy's gotten used to the fact that I'm probably not going to roll in till nine, nine thirty. But I'll also stay at the office till seven, eight p.m. sometimes because I know that's when I'm doing my best work or I'll go home and I'll work there. And luckily, I have flexibility here that it's OK that I haven't gotten into work until 9 a.m. And I think that that's something that really law firms might be able to look at is being a little bit more flexible with people's times and understanding that not everyone is going to be able to show up at six or seven and do their best work. I mean, I can show up at 7 a.m., but you're not going to get much out of me for the first two hours. <laughs> and if I show up at 7 a.m., I don't plan on stay being here at 7 p.m. And that's how I try to keep myself at a healthy work level is if I know that I showed up very early um, one day or if I stayed particularly late, I will allow myself to come in a little bit later the next day and not feel guilty about it. Like this That's morning, trick. this morning, I, I think I came in around 930, 945, but 
like Amy said, I, 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 I didn't sent her, notice. <laughs> I sent her an email at 11 o'clock because that's when I had gotten a brief done and I and I wanted to send it to her to have her look over it. So I knew that she knew I worked To rub late. it in my face that you were still working and I'd be <laughs> yeah. asleep for three hours. Absolutely. I'm just recognizing what a perfect pair we really are. Yeah. <laughs> perfect you guys really pair. never stop working. We're, we're never, never around the 24 clock. 7 yeah. kind of team. It works. That's it great. works. So that's what I do. I don't have a great strategy for this yet. I guess this is the first year I won't have been in school. And I just realized a few weeks ago, I guess, that like I won't get like a, a month off at Christmas. And I feel like I this is the first year I haven't been in school. So like my or entire Or three life. months at, in summer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've always worked. Yeah. You've always worked. But I would just like go to my parents so I wouldn't come into the office. And so that was how I would be really burnt out after finals and then I would take some time off. So I think that it's going to be an interesting learning experience, learning how to kind of, I don't give myself a break sometimes when I need it. And I think that that's the thing with our profession. It kind of, at least in trial practice, kind of ebbs and flows and you have to learn to take those moments when you can get them. And if there's a day when you can leave the office early, it feels really weird, but like you have to do it for yourself, I think. I think that's very astute, and I'm glad to hear that you recognize that. I will expect to actually see it happen. That's the harder <laughs> part. Recognition is one thing. Putting it in action is is harder. Right. But I'm glad to hear that because I remember um, have when I was younger at a different law firm, It I had gone to a deposition with a partner, and the deposition had gotten over maybe 2.30, 3 o'clock, and we were going back to the office and he was like, I'm going home. And I was like, oh, really? He's like, look, you have to take the time when you can get it because you won't always have it. And that was a good lesson to learn at being a young lawyer because it's true. It's there's going to be work there for you. There's it's going to be there for you. And you have to decide the when you can do it the, the best, most efficient way. And if it's morning, that's great. If it's evening, that's that's OK, too. <laughs> Yes. All right. I guess it's okay. I don't feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me put myself in this context. Liz, I am with you. I am not a morning person. Amy and Mary, I am with you. I force myself to get up <laughs> like and, and work out in the morning. So my wife's a morning person. I'm not. I, I don't even think I'm a night person. Like I would <laughs> I would be if my wife didn't also want to go to bed at like nine o'clock, which I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that's great. Um so I probably get a lot more sleep than I'm entitled to. But I a couple of years ago I I realized that I can change anything that I don't like it, that's within my control, but slowly. So I used to be a more of a procrastinator. I'm not that anymore, but it probably took a couple of years for that to change. Now I get up at five and go work out at the gym. And even though when that first snooze, my alarm is titled gym time, only one snooze. <laughs> so I got nine minutes by iPhone standards to snooze in the morning, which is not what I would choose if I, if I didn't have anywhere to be. Anyway, so I get it done in the morning and I do love that time and I love getting there and I love that I do it. it it's just kind of hard for me. It's like, you know, I'm a little bit of a fish out of water with using my mornings. But Mary, I agree with you in the sense of, you know, that time in the morning, if you use it, it's like free time that you've found. Mm -hmm. Literally nothing, no one is calling me or I don't need to be anywhere else. Whereas when I tried to like fit in going to the gym or something in the afternoon after work, like, let me tell you my long list of excuses that came up right? and all the work that could be done instead of taking care of myself. So I do try to take care of myself in that regard, but yeah, I'm always surprised when, when I get knocked down and realize like I have to do something to recharge, whether it's like even taking like a half hour to take a bath or do yoga or something like that. Like that's helpful. I, I'm just not very good at being proactive about it. I think that's, we all struggle with that. You can talk about it. You can absolutely know the right thing to do and then still yet choose not to do it. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's important to know it yourself and to know what makes you feel better. And if it's, shopping by God, then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Everything. You'll be better at your job I if your hobby better. is shopping. <laughs> I, it is. And I'm not I'm like Liz. I'm not feeling guilty about it. <laughs> but I think everybody has to have that, even if it's a small thing or just something that they do occasionally. You have to. And I think, too, something specific to the Simon Law Firm, I can't speak to other firms, but we're talking about refueling and recharging. And I think with that comes a mutual respect for the people that you work with. And I have found at this firm that it doesn't matter whether you're one year out of law school or 15 years out, everybody will respect when you have the time to refuel and recharge. And we're all treated the same way because we get our work done and know how to get your work done. Yeah. And if you can get your work done in the time that you're supposed to, which we all do, then you have that respect for your colleagues to give them that that time or the afternoon. And let me add this too. So I think Elizabeth, you were saying like you have to take the time when you have it. And that's so true in litigation just because it's, it comes in waves and you could go through a couple months where you feel like you are riding the top of that wave and you're not getting a break. And the only way to balance that I think is through experience and going through those waves enough to, to know to take the time off or, you know, do whatever it is that you can when you are kind of in a lull. So recently I had a case scheduled at the end of August, which got moved to the middle of October right before we had started the case in August. So I went on vacation in August and then when it settled right before trial in October, then I went on vacation again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, I, I questioned that a little. I was tagging on to an in-law trip on, on the second go-around for vacation. So, you know, I don't know, call that a vacation to what extent you will. <laughs> but it was really important because I, I also, you know, it's right now as we're recording this, it's, you know, pretty much the end of the year. We're in the last quarter. And I looked back at my year. I keep kind of a, a keep track of, you know, what cases have resolved and, and what's been happening in my own you know ledger, if you will. And this has been one of my best years. And I've probably, I, you know, with, I have a 10 month old and I took off this first six weeks of this year to be home with my wife who had had our baby. And I probably took off more time this year than any year. And not one person in this office has given me a side eye or anything like that. And I realize it's been one of my best years. So it's it's weird in litigation how that pans out. And if you can realize that, that it's really about using the time you have when you're working and using the time to be off when you have given yourself the time off, I think that helps balance things a little bit. I think also in your case, you've had so many years working up to that and yeah. preparing yourself for that and learning that it's okay to take a few days here and there because and it's have, new it feels yeah, new exactly yeah. it's, it's, it takes time at least it did for me it took me time to believe i deserved any time yeah. off yeah yeah and and i don't i'm not proud of that i'm not proud of that at all because i think that there were you know things i could have done better and i, I recognize now Really, I really recognize now that I'm a better person, lawyer, wife, mother, blah, 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 if I'm, if, if I'm not burned out, if I'm not tired all the time. For me, it was a learned experience, something that I had to learn the hard way. And I just hope that that's not, I wish that I didn't have to. I wish mm-hmm. that it was more intuitive. Yeah, yeah. Innate, that I would have been like, I deserve some time off and I'm taking all the time I deserve. Is that lawyer culture though? I know that yeah. that we you you can never. Really it's always be a competition. Yeah, yeah. It is. you wear yeah. like how long or how hard you're working. It's a badge of honor. Oh and yeah. Now I'm I totally. kind of feel the opposite about that. Like when I hear someone who's been practicing the same amount of time as me talk about you know how they're spending sixty and seventy and eighty hours in the office a week, I'm like, oh, you doing something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like you have earned some stripes, not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> well, at some point, you wonder if that is external or internal. Sure, because exactly. I think there those forces are both happening. But you really do have to trust. Again, and going back, my buzzword, my buzz phrase: trust yourself, because you work hard and. It, it, one thing my mother has always told me is no one's looking out for you, really. I mean, you're there, you're in a, at a great firm, and, but no one's job is to make sure that you're doing okay except for you. And you just have to take that seriously. All right. 
Yeah. Takeaways. Takeaways. I shouldn't feel guilty about not being a morning person. That's my takeaway. So my takeaway is to rely on all my friends and colleagues for ways to refuel and retreat when I don't know how to do that myself. I have a lot to learn. Okay. <laughs> That's my takeaway. Uh, I think mine is take the time when you can get it. Ditto. I have the same takeaways. I don't Elizabeth. think I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. That's against the takeaway rules. <laughs> now you can do it. And I agree with Elizabeth. Same takeaway. I think you have to have something booked on your calendar all the time. Whether it's a month from now or a year from now, look at your calendar right now. Everybody look at their calendar right now. Scared. And pick three or four days in a month or in a, in a year and block it out. You don't have to plan the actual yeah. trip. Yeah, but just block, block it, it out. I'm you telling know you, those trial you settings are going to go right on top. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We hope that after listening to this episode, you go treat yourself to a bath or a 30 minute yoga session <laughs> or just sleep in that guys, guys. <laughs> or go to bed early, go to bed early. <laughs> Do it, girl. <laughs> Join us all next time on Heels in the Courtroom and visit us at our website, heelsinthecourtroom.law. Thanks for listening. Thank you, everyone, for listening to one of our Encore presentations. We will be back in your feed with new episodes next week. Thanks a lot. Subscribe to Heels in the Courtroom now and check out the other legal podcasts in the Simon Law Firm library. Dive into the legal drama behind America's first medical malpractice case against opioid overprescription in Results Don't Lie. Check it out.